Like many of us, um, I tend to buy fountain pens online from online sources. Um, could be because of price, could be because it's more convenient at the times that we, we live right now. So what happens when you buy a pen and when, once you, you get it in your hands after you unbox it and you realize that it's a little bit too small? Could be a little bit unbalanced or it could be that the weight just doesn't feel right to you. So what do you do? I mean, for most of us, um, easy choice, either you sell the pen, give it to someone, um, maybe your children, maybe your friends. So what steps can you take to make sure that your next pen purchase is you know, a more pleasant one and you'll find the pen of your dreams, literally? You should actually take some measurements. The first thing that you'll need to take the measurement of is um, of the body of the pen when it's uncapped. Right, so it's hard to do this on, on camera, but I'll attempt to, to kind of do so. So I've just kind of lined up um, my M200 on a vernier caliper and it's roughly 12.2 or 12.1 millimeters long, right? Just this area of the pen. Obviously, we're not gonna measure the length of the cap. And this will be useful for you later on, which I'll show, show to you. As I mentioned, this pen, it's probably the right length or it's just slightly short for me. The other measurement which I tend to want to take is actually of this area of the pen right here, which is actually the section area. So the way to measure this is to measure from um, kind of the, the screw threads to where the, the kind of the nib, or the nib unit starts. So for this particular pen, it's about one and a half slightly less than one and a half, uh, sorry, about 15 millimeters. The third measurement that you want, might want to do, trying to juggle my pen through my tripod down here, is actually the thickness of this section down here. So it's probably much easier if you had one of these uh, vernier calipers. These don't cost a lot. Bought this from Daiso for like $2, uh, Singapore dollars. And, you know, just it's hard to kind of take lots of measurements. What I tend to do is just take a measurement at the middle part of the section. As you can see, this pen is pretty much exactly at 10 millimeters um, in thickness or in girth. So with these measurements all made, what do I typically do next? What I've done is I've drawn, I've attempted to make a drawing of a pen. And this pen is actually um, probably not unusually, this is actually my A23, which I kind of drew just now before the, making the video. And looking at the, the parts of the pen, right, the, the important parts of the pen to me are actually the nib. Right, probably, I won't want to put a percentage on it, but the nib is probably, which would probably comprise of 50%, if not more, of, of the, the pen, whether or not you like the pen. And we'll get to nibs in probably another video, right? So obviously you need to know whether or not you want a fine nib, you want a smooth, a nib that's smooth, and, and so on, right? Um, Next part of the pen is actually the feet, which probably doesn't get a lot of attention from a lot of uh, people who buy fountain pens, but it's actually a very important part of the pen. If you have a pen um, which has a feet that doesn't allow the ink to kind of travel, enough ink to travel down to the nib or the tip of the nib, you would actually get you know, dry pens. I mean, there are ways to kind of mitigate this by tuning the nib and so on. But looking at the feet is, is a very important, or rather the, the feet design and the materials 
is a very important part of buying a fountain pen. Um, it's not the exact science, but the number of fins uh, is one of those things which I look at. Right. Typically, the more fins the feed has, right, it tends to be a slightly wetter writer. Don't quote me on this. Other things that you want to take note of is obviously the section uh, length and the girth, right? Lots of websites out there, um, and I'll, I'll go through one of them later on in, in the second part of the video. They give you the section length, but um, sorry, they give you the girth, but not many of them actually measure the, and give you the section length. Um, other things to take note of um, when buying a pen, right? So this, the 823 is actually a screw-on cap. And you might like that, right? You might not like pens that are, you know, um, snap caps, so to say. So that's also an important thing to take note of. The mechanism, the filling mechanism. So this is a 823 drawing. So basically this is a, 823 is actually a vacuum filler. Um, there are obviously other types of mechanisms um, to fill a fountain pen. A uh, converter will probably be, or cartridge would be the, probably be the most common ones. There are also pens that are eye droppers. Um, and obviously there's, there's also the piston filler, which is the M, which is what the M200 is. The last aspect, or one of the last aspects to take note of is actually capacity. So I'm not big on capacity. I don't, you know, especially right now, I don't use pens for like a week, uh, go traveling for a week that, or rather I don't write like endless pages of, of text that I would need the capacity, but for you, it might be important. So you need to take note of this as well. And what else do you need to take note of is, and this is probably the, the, the hard one to kind of uh, get if you don't have the pen in front of you. And that's actually the balance point, right? So I'll give you, I'll take out the eight through three again to kind of show you what I mean. So if I attempted to balance the eight two three on my finger, you might be able to notice that um, the, the weight of the pen is actually at the back part down here. So the effect of this is when I hold a pen, you would definitely feel weight down here on the back of your, of your um, hand down here. Right. So I classify pens like this as um, hit light pens. So I'm a tennis player. So basically, um, you know, hit light means the hit feels light or the nip feels light. Um, hit heavy pens are actually the ones that you feel the nip you know, you literally feel the weight at the, the front part of the pen. And then there are pens that uh, are pretty balanced, right? So that's an important characteristic to me, right? And it's not easy, like I mentioned, to get this, um, get this metric or this number, right? However, I tend to find that uh, pens that have a vacuum mechanism or pens that are piston fillers tend to be kind of weighted, you know, at more towards the back of the pen, or the headlight pens. Um, cartridge converters and uh, maybe eyedroppers tend to be either more balanced or even tilting towards more of the head heavy characteristic. The last aspect of you know, on, on my diagram is actually uncapped length, right? So if you remember in my M200 example, that pen felt a little short. So this is also a very important uh, metric or, or characteristic to take a look at. The other parts of the, the pen, which I think you should kind of take note of um, would be things like the body material what, what material is the body made out of? The, and that actually translates to the feel of the pen, right? Um, we all know that 
Um, there are some pens out there that feel immediately when you hold it in your hand, it feels like that's a quality pen, right? For example, this 823, you know, the plastic or the resin feels expensive, right? So feel, durability and feel. The other thing is price, obviously. I have, I tend to have a little uh, guideline, the, the personal guideline to say that if, uh, if a pen is more than about $140, um, it must have a gold nib, right? I mean, I, unless there's something very extraordinary about the rest of the pen, you know, I, I tend to favor you know, pens, pens that are out, out, outside of this price range or more than this price, they, they should have a gold nib. And then there's also reliability, right? So that's also probably not so easy to kind of gauge. Um, but that's also another characteristic that you should maybe by looking at forums like Fountain Pen Network or YouTube uh, videos, you kind of, kind of get a gauge of. So with these kind of uh, characteristic characteristics in mind, I've what I do, what I tend to do is I would actually put uh, the pens that I own, some, at least some of them, right? For example, I've, I've put down here benchmark that the Pilot Custom 823 is kind of like to me a benchmark pen that the length is just right. Uh, the weight could be a little bit um, heavy, right? It's at 19 grams and um, it's hit, hit light, which actually is not my ideal uh, desired characteristic. I like pens that are balanced. Um, and then other numbers that I've put down is the section length um, and the material and lastly the nips, nip size. I'm sorry, can't get this on camera but the last column is actually nip size. You could create a table, a similar type table for yourself based on the characteristics that are important to you. And you know, if you're considering buying a pen Right. For example, I was thinking of, of getting a Pilot Prera and I once I got some of these numbers off the internet, I realized that it was really too small. Right. Um, uncapped Prera is about 10.8 centimeters um, and that's a, that was a deal breaker for me. That's why I kind of uh, am not going to get that pen. So the next part of the video, I'm going to show you how you can actually get some of these numbers and kind of filter down uh, pens that you might be thinking of buying um, and kind of do that process of elimination so that you don't end up buying a pen that doesn't suit you or doesn't fit you or doesn't feel right. So I'm gonna pause the video right now and I'll come back soon um, with some pen shopping websites. So I'm using jet pens um, you know, right now, but you can actually use your own website of choice. Uh, could be Goulet, Goulet Pens or Amazon or anything like that. The nice thing about Jet Pens, however, is that uh, they have a filter on the left hand side of the screen. As you can see, you can filter pens by material, by color, nib, and so on. However, for me, the more important uh, measurements would be you know the length and the grip diameter so assuming i wanted to kind of drill down to pens that i might like right uh, you know i could choose the grip diameter to start with and i've noticed that uh, the more you you select items down here at least for this particular website it kind of gets in a a little bit of a confusing situation where you get pens that are not in, in that range, right? Um, however, that's another uh, story for another another day. So, assuming I've chosen the grip diameter, what I wanted to show you is, um, you know, once I drill into a pen that I like, you know, I do like the 912 quite a lot. You've seen my unboxing video. And the thing that I, you know, you can definitely read up about the pens and the nips and so on. The thing that I wanted to kind of drill into was actually the specification, right? And here, 
you can actually match um, the items such as the grip, the diameter of the grip, which is actually the girth, which I mentioned earlier on. Uh, obviously, you can get things like the filling mechanism. You can you can get um, you know the nib and so on. Uh, the other important metric is actually this metric of length uncapped, right? So this is a 12.5 centimeter uh, length uncapped, and I know. Um, that it would definitely be longer than that M200. Sorry to keep on uh, bashing the M200. I really like that pen a lot. But at least you get a good idea of whether or not when you hold this pen uh, in your hand, how does it actually feel, right? So, so I hope this helps. I hope this video helps uh, in your pen uh, shopping and uh, please let me know whether or not you do a similar thing when you go on your shopping um, for pens and let me know your comments um, and you know please subscribe please like and i'll see you in the next video thanks very much bye bye